searching for this all my life because my life i've been looking for a boy who can treat me right your dark hair because i so bright Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Solo Sheena Spills. We've got some tea we're going to sip. Also, I'm just keeping my vocal cords hydrated with some water. But there were a lot of questions you guys sent in. So we're just going to jump right in. The photo I posted right in front of the Cheers sign bar in Boston. Everyone thought I was still in Boston yesterday. I was not. I was there last week because the International OCD Foundation, who I am working with, their headquarters are based there. And it was just OCD Awareness Week. So I sat down and did a long interview that will be posted soon. Just opened up about all things OCD and it was really good. I'm looking forward to the conference next year. It's going to be in Chicago, which I think will be so fun. And I have really genuinely enjoyed working with this team. They are doing so many incredible things. And I had no idea how many millions, 238 million people affected by OCD. So there was a lot I learned on that trip. But that's the reason why I went. I brought my mom. Boston has literally been top of my American bucket list for as long as I can remember. And I was so excited that I finally had a reason to go. Otherwise, I would have just been booking a trip to Boston just to go, which was going to eventually happen. But I've wanted to go there for so long. October, the leaves changing colors. Although in the city, there wasn't as much of that as I would have liked. They said we needed to get a little out of the city. So definitely a reason to go back. I know summer would absolutely love it there. And it was just a really good trip. Just me and my mom went to a fun Irish pub the last night, had some great meals at these amazing restaurants and overall a very fun trip. So definitely will be taking more trips back to Boston to work with the OCD Foundation. I also didn't get a chance to go to Salem. We didn't have time for it, but Salem in October sounds so fun. So maybe next year I'll take my daughter. She is obsessed with Halloween. She has like three or four costumes she wants to be. Don't know if we're going to have time to get through all of them, but very excited for Halloween with her. All right, back to questions. Maddie Riley, what was the biggest thing that helped with your postpartum OCD? Honestly, I think talking about it has been one of the things that has helped me the most, just being open about all of the crazy things that go on inside my head because I don't feel ashamed or crazy to talk about it anymore. And that was the hardest thing. It was like once I opened up with my therapist, I've done EMDR therapy that's been amazing. I've done exposure therapy, which has been great. But just opening up to people and realizing how many other people go through this as well and have intrusive thoughts, it's a safe space to talk about it. So I think that has been the biggest thing that's helped me personally. And oh, okay. So the next question is about when we were young. So along that line, a girl I just met who was friends with the band that my sister and I went there with, she was telling me about her OCD as well. And I swear the rest of the festival, it just bonded us in a way instantly where we're talking about our kids, we're talking about our OCD. And it just made me feel so good to say things out loud and to know that other people, like I said, are going through this. And it just made the festival, I don't say that much more fun because it's not like a fun thing that we go through in our heads, but being able to talk to someone, relate to someone, another parent who also suffers from OCD. It just, it was a nice connection and friendship I made. And she's going to be joining me at the conference next year in Chicago. So really excited for that. And I saw, I got some questions. Uh, what were your top five bands or the sets you liked at When We Were Young Festival? So there's this festival in Vegas. I think this was the third year. I missed it last year. I was really sick. I wanted to go the first year for whatever reason. I couldn't. It's like a big emo festival. All of the music I listened to in high school. We saw Newfound Glory, Simple Plan, Fallout Boy, My Chemical Romance, 
the used. I mean, there were so many good bands. And it was awesome because Newfound Glory, who I've been obsessed with since high school and never saw live, the very last song he did was Part of Your World, like the Disney Ariel Little Mermaid song. And that moment I was like, I I got mom guilt for sure being there without my daughter, but it's not a place I would have brought my daughter to. But it was also just a good moment. And I got to share that with a fellow mom. And it was really fun. What do you think of Katie and Nick? So I actually met him this weekend. We were all by the artist trailers in the hangout area. And him and Katie were walking up while I was standing at the taco truck in line getting food. And I said hi to her. Her hair's this like really cute reddish color right now. She introduced me to her boyfriend. And I know there's been some things online recently I've seen little bits and pieces of, but let me tell you, he could not have been nicer. We ended up at a different food truck in like a five, 10 minute conversation with some mutual friends. He's from San Diego and we just like talked about that. And then I ran into them again later back at the hotel at the end of the night and was just such a sweet guy. Caught the end of their set. We actually left Fall Out Boy a little early because they were playing at the same time. But I wanted to check out Sleeping With Sirens. I wanted to see what the band was all about. And they were really good. So it was fun. I was glad I got to see her, meet him, see the band. And overall, it was a very fun weekend. And my voice is getting better. It's not being completely punished after being at a festival. Usually when I get back from a weekend like that and I have to podcast, it's really hoarse and raspy as you guys know. So I think my meds are working and hopefully with my dietary adjustments, the voice just stays where it's at. Cante Decode 04. Were there any moments from previous seasons of EPR where you wanted to break the fourth wall? Oh my God, so many. And we do. They don't always show it because it's like, you know, do your job, say things a certain way where you can't say like last season, you have to say last summer. But now I feel like a lot of shows are breaking the fourth wall a little more. They're leaving in some production things because you are watching a television show. And sometimes they just have to remind you of that. Like Emily and I were talking about last week, the hot mic moment with Heather Dubrow, where she was like, don't admonish me on camera. And it was like, it's just shows, you know, it's like you're a real person, you're filming a TV show. And I love when they leave those moments in personally. So I like that we're finally able to do that a little more. At Jace underscore son, do you regret having your weddings as a storyline on the show? Not at all. It was such a huge part of my life, both times. And that's what I signed up to do is to capture all of these moments in my life on the show. So no, I love that we have those moments to look back on. They were beautiful weddings and it was fun to film more so the second one than the first. The first one was kind of a shit show, but also so was that marriage. So there's that. Ainsley Fulmer, do you ever rewatch old VPR episodes? Will you let Summer watch any? Uh, I don't actually watch any old episodes unless it's airing right before a new episode. I may catch the end of one of the old episodes, but I really don't like watching it. Um, There's a lot of cringe moments of me. I'll be posting some of those on TikTok. I saw this new trend going on and I saw someone had already clipped a part of me and I'm like, okay, I might just need to repost that one. But there's so many cringe moments to pick from. I'm like, which one for the TikTok? And also, I mean, look, it's it's out there. You know, if there's a day when Summer wants to watch it, I, I would try to steer her away from it. But if she watches it, she watches it. But I love that she likes to watch my vlogs and I'm happy to let her watch all of those. You know, we've documented her whole life on YouTube. So that's great. It's like, my version of photo albums in video form. And I remember as a kid, which I need to do this more because everything is so digital now. I still to this day love going through my old family photo albums of me when I was a kid, like looking at the physical book, not just scrolling in an album in my phone of photos. So I do need to do more than just Summer's Baby Book for her. But 
I love that she's going to be able to go back and look at all of these videos from all of these moments in her life because when I show her these old vlogs, she thinks she remembers it and maybe she does, but she's been asking to go back to Hawaii. And I'm like, there's no way you remember Hawaii. You were seven months old, but we booked Hawaii in December. Very excited about that. And she can't wait. I was showing her photos and she definitely doesn't remember, but she's really excited to go back. Old Doc Goodwin, do you still talk to anyone from VPR aside from Lala? I mean, honestly, pretty much everyone except Sandoval. And there, okay, yeah, there were a lot of questions about season 12. A lot. Uh, before we get into all of those, I'm going to take a quick break, make myself a tea, and then maybe spill it. Hey, Shenanigans listeners, this episode is proudly brought to you by Lola V, an award-winning hair care line founded by the ever-fabulous and ever-iconic Jennifer Aniston. It's like as the leaves begin to fall and, you know, the air turns a bit crisp, it's time to reassess your hair care routine. Do you ever wonder why your hair never seems to reach its full potential? You know, it may be the weather, but it also might just be hidden in your scalp. And for the one factor we can control, Lola V's bioengineered a two-in-one game changer to clean and nourish your scalp. The new exfoliate and detox scalp shampoo combines the power of a scalp scrub and a clarifying shampoo. This has been one of my personal favorite things to use. It has a unique blend of activated charcoal powder, bamboo extract, gentle AHAs to get rid of all of that gunk weighing your hair down, and it leaves your scalp clean and perfectly balanced. Also, what I love is they have a travel size glossing detangler five pack, and it is perfect for if you travel a lot like I do. Also, this really amazing sculpting paste that I love. Check out all Lola V products at their website at lolavee.com. As our loyal listeners, you'll get an exclusive 15% off your entire order when you use code GOODISGOLD at checkout. That's 15% off your order at L-O-L-A-V-I-E.com with promo code GOODISGOLD. Please note you can only use one promo code per order and discounts can't be combined. After you purchase, they'll ask you where you heard about us. Please support our show and tell them we sent you. Your hair will thank you. Okay, and here's something I'm really looking forward to as the weather turns cooler there's football games, of course. Pumpkin spice lattes are in season. I'm obsessed, but also slipping into a cozy sweater from Quince. I feel like we're almost there. It's cooling down at night. I'm traveling to the East Coast. I get a cozy up in my sweaters from Quince. They are known for their Mongolian cashmere sweaters specifically from $50 and it's not just that. All Quince items are priced, get this, 50 to 80% less than similar brands. They have beautiful leather jackets. They also have like cotton cardigans, which I've gotten for summer, soft denim, so much more. I got some matching legging sets for summer that are so adorable. And Quince only works with factories that use safe, ethical, and responsible manufacturing practices. And of course, all of their fabrics are premium and the finishes that it just gives you that luxury feel in every piece. The ones that Summer has already outgrown, we have passed on to the cousins because they are just too timeless to give up and let's see, leave the family. So get cozy in Quince's high quality wardrobe essentials. Go to quince.com slash honey for free shipping on your order and 365 day returns. That's com slash honey to get free shipping and 365 day returns. Quince.com slash honey. And we're back. Will there be a VPR season 12? Who is holding up production of VPR? Do you think VPR will come back? So many questions about this. Um, I don't know. I hope so. I think we definitely owe it to the fans to whether it is a final season, whether it is a continuation of our storyline in whatever way, I think that we owe it to everyone to do another. You know, I don't feel like our story ended in San Francisco last year and at that reunion. I think there is 
so much more story to tell. So I know there have been some reports saying there are delays due to like some cast members not getting along and whatnot, holding out for more money. Um, I haven't heard that personally. That's definitely not me. So I guess, you know, the simple answer for all of you is just uh, there is no status update to share. But yeah, as far as I know, there's no hold up around like people holding out for more money because I don't even think the conversations are there yet. I also I was with Lala last night. It was her six year sober birthday anniversary. I guess birthday. It's like a rebirth, you know, and she was telling me she was just on Jeff Lewis yesterday morning. And I saw some questions came in about that, that she said, there isn't any more story left to tell. Do you agree? I do not agree with that. And that's the beauty of friendships is you don't always have to agree with your best friend or your friend or your acquaintance. You know, you're allowed to have different opinions. I feel like there's always going to be story left to tell because we're going to be living our lives, you know, but say like a hypothetical season 12, it would look different. You know, the group that you've followed this friend group for 11 seasons. I mean, I guess 10 because 11, it was already fractured, but it really is a broken group. So for the network and producers, I mean, that is definitely challenging. You know, we're not going to be going on a big group trip. We're not going to all be, unless it's, you know, James Kennedy, probably all at one event celebrating someone or something with Lisa Vanderpump. So I do think, though, we owe it to the audience who has followed us for the past 11 seasons to just continue sharing our story. You know, whether that is on to a new chapter or the final one, I think we've at least got one more, but I don't know anything for sure. That's just how I feel. So will the next season of VPR focus on rebuilding the friendships between you guys? I mean, if there is one and depending on who is a part of it, yeah, I definitely hope there is some rebuilding. You know, I definitely always work towards positive path with others and I feel like through therapy and the work I've been doing on myself, I also realize that rebuilding, you know, quote unquote, it doesn't mean that we're building a bridge to our past relationship. And, you know, like when we were all in a good place, I I think that we we all change. We all evolve life, friendships, ebb and flows and I don't know. Sometimes we just need to meet each other where we are and rebuilding to a new place where that dynamic might look different than it did before. I don't know. But, you know, stay tuned. I do. I I do. I definitely do think there's more story to tell. So I don't know. You guys will probably find out before I find out. We'll see. With the break from VPR, has your mental health improved or stayed the same? I don't know, because now I'm on meds. So my mental health has definitely improved. I don't know if the cause of that is not filming or the Zoloft, but I'm definitely in a good place mentally. So whatever the reason being, I mean, it's not like I've been completely absent to reality TV since the VPR break. So... I think the Zoloft is definitely helping. Are you feeling like you don't need VPR in your life now? You look so happy now. From Matt Oath. Oh, well, thank you. I feel like I always need a little bit of reality TV in my life, honestly, because when I'm able to share my story and open up about things like postpartum OCD, you know, who knows what's going to be the next thing that happens to me in my life that is going to be relatable. So I definitely enjoy those aspects of filming TV. Of course, I don't enjoy fighting with my friends and the conflict and drama and all of that. I mean, sometimes I guess like there's those situations where, you know, you just want to go in. But overall, I don't enjoy that part of it. So I feel like, I don't know. I'm, I'm someone who always is going to be documenting my life in one way or another, whether that is on reality TV, YouTube, or this podcast. I'm not going anywhere ever until I die. So there's that. 
If VPR ends, would you do a show about just you and Brock? Um, never say never. However, I do feel like when it's a show just about you, there is a lot of pressure. I've learned this from like Kendra Wilkinson, who had her own show for so long. And I just know there's a lot of pressure on a relationship to carry your own show. If Brock and I were to do our own show, I think it would need to be more based around like his building and maybe I host it or something like that. I don't know about a show just about our lives because I think there's a lot of pressure to carry storyline, have the drama, have all of that with a relationship. But who knows? We'll see. Would you ever consider joining another reality show other than VPR? Um, yeah, absolutely. I enjoy doing this. So, you know, if it makes sense, stay tuned there. Did Sosa give you baby fever? I've had this question so much from friends, family, and strangers. Um, it's like if I, how do I say this? Um, I feel like there's no right answer because if I say no, then people are like, well, Summer needs a sibling. If I say yes, then it's like maybe I'm complaining that I need a second kid. Um, I've said multiple times, I know it just like unless it's said on Vanderpump Rules, it doesn't seem to reach everyone. I'm completely tabling this conversation until next year. I... Just I do love seeing Summer with Sosa, with Janet's son, Cameron, and I know she would be an amazing big sister. So as much as I love having a sibling now that I'm older, I do want to give that to her as well. My sister and I have a 12 year age gap and we're best friends now. When she was growing up, you know, we weren't as close. Obviously, I started college when she started kindergarten. But now later in life, I can't imagine still being an only child because I've had a sister for, you know, so long, 27 years. So I do want Summer to have a sibling that she grows up with. I am fully aware she has two siblings in Australia. They are not forgotten ever. Those are not my children and they are not growing up with her, unfortunately. So I would like to give her a sibling, whether that is via surrogate, adoption, maybe both if I wanted to make my husband really happy and have two more, but I'm not there yet. We met with the fertility doctor, but just the thought of making embryos and then what if we have, you know, more than three what do, or three or more, like, what do we do? Because I could convince myself maybe to have two more, maybe, I don't know. But three, uh, I don't know about that. So I'm mentally not there. I don't think I'm going to be there in 2025. But we could probably maybe get to a place where mentally I'm able to start talking about surrogacy next year. I'm just not there yet. Okay, more on the Jeff Lewis show. I know Lala said this week she isn't interested in rebuilding her relationship with Ariana. But do you think there's any hope for reconciliation there? Look, a lot of us speak in absolutes in this show. I mean, the amount of times I said I would never be friends with Katie Maloney again. And then, you know, we're friends again. And then we're not. And then we're doing a Chili's commercial together. And just so um, I don't know. Also, like if you asked me four years ago, even if I would ever be friends with Lala again, I would have said absolutely not. Hell no. But look at us now. We're family. We're raising the kids together. So anything is possible in this group. I tend to speak in absolutes as well. I get that. But I just know that anytime we do speak that way, it doesn't always mean that that's how it's going to be because we've been through a lot, this group, and we're a resilient bunch. We've come back from a lot, but things also are a little different this time. So we'll see. Tell the truth, girl. Lala played it cool on her podcast, but was she pissed when she found out that Britney and Julian were hooking up? Did Britney know Julian was engaged? Ooh, I think that is a story for season two of The Valley and a great time to take another ad break. <laughs> we all know cats are picky. 
I am too. Anybody who knows me knows it, especially when it comes to my cats. We've gone through a ton of cat litter over the years, literally 15 years, and the best for us in our household by far is Pretty Litter. And here's why. Let me tell you. Pretty Litter's non-clumping formula traps odor and moisture. It's ultra absorbent. It's lightweight, low dust, and one six-pound bag works for up to a month. I'm telling you, whether it's a normal litter box or our litter robot, it lasts so long. And this really gives me peace of mind because Pretty Litter changes color to indicate early signs of potential illnesses in my cats, like UTIs, kidney issues, and so many more. But this is literally how I realized that Penny probably had a kidney issue because it was changing color. We went to the vet and lo and behold, my kitty has kidney disease and is now on a special diet. And if that wasn't enough, Pretty Litter ships free right to my door. I never run out. I don't have huge kitty litter bags taking up space. And even better, I don't have to lug those huge tubs from a store to my car and into my house. Pretty Litter's amazing. You have to try it. If you have cats, I'm telling you, go to prettylitter.com slash goodisgold to save 20% on your first order and get a free cat toy. That's prettylitter.com slash goodisgold to save 20% on your first order and get a free cat toy. PrettyLitter.com slash good as gold. Terms and conditions apply. See site for details. Okay, one thing in our household that we now can't live without is Hero Bread. I love it. Brock loves it. Summer loves it. And it's odd sometimes when we all love the same thing because I'm picky. She's picky. Brock eats everything. But one thing he's picky about is his bread. And the second he opened the Hero Bread tortillas as he calls them wraps, he was like, honey, where did we get this? We need to get more. Hero Bread has reinvented the bread and buns. They have fluffy, delicious flavor and texture with no net carbs, zero grams of sugar, and fewer calories, plus protein and fiber. And now you can try their sweet, oh my God, melt in your mouth Hawaiian rolls for feeling, you know, guilt-free, when you want to eat some bread. Hawaiian rolls are a fan favorite in our household. I love to make little sliders and sandwiches, and they're just the best. All of your favorites, no consequences or compromises. Soft, fluffy, this bread, the tortillas, the Hawaiian rolls, it's all so good. Like if you want like a refreshing sandwich, a cheeseburger, I'm telling you, you want it on Hero Bread. Keep the carbs out of fall without compromising flavor with Hero Bread. Get 10% off your order at hero.co and use code goodisgold at checkout. That's goodisgold at H-E-R-O dot C-O. Okay, we're back. More questions. How is Brock's Ironman training going? What is your favorite kind of workout? His training, oh my God, I'm so proud of him. He is fully committing to this. The only thing is he now wants to buy like a five to $12,000 bike for the Ironman that I'm like, so then you're gonna pack that up in a suitcase and like fly it to Puerto Rico. I mean, he's like, yeah, you know, the airline will insure it and it'll be fine. So he hasn't started the cycling part of it yet. He did get a swim coach. He's been running. And he is crushing it. I'm very proud of him. It was really cute. He asked me if I wanted to join him in training for this because he thought it would be something that would really push me. And I said, that's really sweet of you, honey, but absolutely fucking not. Are you doing a family Halloween costume? We are going to be a skeleton family. Yes, we are. Other than the skeleton family, Summer said she wanted to be a werewolf. And when Brock was on live the other day, someone goes, wait, is Summer going to be a wolf so Sheena can be Little Red Riding Hood? And I was like, no, but that is a great idea. Went on Amazon, ordered me a Little Red Riding Hood costume. So that's going to be another one just for me and Summer because I don't know who Brock's going to be for that. I guess we could make him like the grandma. That would be funny. (laughs) He would totally do that too. Do we have the time? We'll see. 
The new podcast intro is fun, but sounds like a sports announcer. What is the connection there? Well, it is indeed a sports announcer. It is the literal voice of the NFL himself. Scott Hansen, he hosts NFL Red Zone. I've always been a football girly, like even before my fellow Swifties got on the bandwagon. I've actually had season tickets for the Chargers ever since they've been in L.A. And last season, I was able to meet Scott at the NFL Experience next to SoFi Stadium where they record the NFL Red Zone. And I shot my shot. I asked him if he would lend his iconic voice to my intro, and we were finally able to make it happen. I was so excited. It was something I had wanted to do for a while, switch up the intro. And once I heard his voice, I was like, we got to do it. And yeah, but also speaking of the NFL, I got to do something really cool this week. I got to kick off game day with Smirnoff here in LA at SoFi Stadium, combining two of my favorite things, football and Smirnoff number 21. It is the official vodka sponsor of the NFL. And they teamed up with Matchbox to create some off the field matchups this season, bringing various fans together to enjoy a good game, get good drinks and even better company because I was there. My boy Vernon was there and oh my God. So I got to host this game with Vernon Davis. And if you're a football fan, you know the name for sure. If not Super Bowl winner, pro bowler, it's like you get the idea. He is a very big deal. And we will be bringing these game day matchups to additional cities this season with an upcoming stop in Detroit. So stay tuned for more on that front. I'm so excited. It's like, for those of you who know how much I love football, this was just the perfect pairing. One of my favorite pastimes, one of my favorite vodkas, and just chef's kiss. And I was also introduced to a new drink that you guys might like. It's called the Rampede Cocktail while I was at this game. So instant new favorite. It contains the Smirnoff number 21 vodka, coconut syrup, obsessed with coconut, pineapple juice and diluted blue curacao. So yummy. But I did feel like I was cheating on my chargers a little bit. So we might have to come up with a chargers inspired cocktail, even though it's the same colors. You know, we might need to have another name. What might that be? Maybe, I don't know, something in like the espresso martini family, the little blue and yellow, something on the corner. I don't know. But if you have any ideas, um, Shoot me a message, comment below if you're listening, watching on YouTube, and maybe we will need you to try one of those out for the next game day. I just want to point out Smirnoff number 21 vodka is distilled from grain and 40% alcohol by volume. The Smirnoff company is located in New York, New York. Remember, sip responsibly and don't share with people under 21 ever because they're not allowed to drink. Or with the Mormons, because they can't drink either. So, all right. A few more questions to wrap up this episode. What is your favorite movie? Do you have a favorite genre? Uh, Almost Famous is obviously one of my favorite movies. It's all happening. A League of Their Own, Selena. So many good movies, honestly. Uh, Favorite genre? Not really. I love a good scary movie. I just feel like there aren't a lot out there. I feel like The Ring was one of the few good movies that actually like got me back in the day. But yeah, no favorite genre. I like them all. We know Summers, but who is your favorite Disney princess? So here's the thing. Summer changes hers. Right now, I think she's in an aerial phase, but she's also been obsessed with Anna, Moana. I mean, she loves so many of them. I grew up loving Jasmine and Belle. Those were my favorites because I felt like just as a little brunette girl, those are the ones I kind of looked the most like. So those were always my favorites. If you ask Brock, his is Pocahontas. And honestly, no, it hasn't really changed since I grew up. I still love Belle and Jasmine. 
How do I get better skin texture? I would recommend hydrofacials and lasers. I think that does wonders for your skin. Any recommendations for the first months after having a baby? Recommendations in what way? If we're talking about fitness, um, pelvic floor exercises are incredible. If we're talking about mental health, giving yourself grace, trusting your gut and your mom instinct, and also just giving yourself some time for yourself. Still, even if it's only once a week, even if it's 10 minutes, just do something for yourself that still makes you feel like yourself. I think that is so good for your mental after having a baby. All right. Jamie.McDaniel, how do you deal with fresh breakups? Ooh, I'm not sure I have the best advice here. However, um, I can tell you what I've done that did or didn't work for me. Um, I think for me personally, cold turkey, cutting off the person works best because when you keep them around and you're still texting them and there's still an emotional or sometimes physical component attached, it makes it harder to get over. And I think just cutting them off completely works best. Rose and Thorn of 2024. Well, we're not at the end of the year yet. Ooh, off the cuff. That's a tough one to think about. I want to table that one and come back to it at the end of the year when we do an end of year shenanigans pod because things could still change. There's been a lot of roses, not too many thorns, but we'll come back to that. Whose location do you still have? <laughs> That's the last question. Let's let's see. I've actually gained several since that episode aired. I've had so many people be like, we want to share our location with you. So I think I have like over 60, to be honest. I've got Logan, Max, Jasmine, Zach, Jenny Ting, Jenna Willis, Heidi D'Amelio, my sister, my trainer, my mom, Kristen Doty, Allie, Brittany, Janet. I've, I've got a lot. Honestly, the list goes on and on. I have Ariana, Marciano, my husband, Jesse, Jay-Z Styles, um, Brad, Nima, Jamie. I've, I've got a lot. There's, there's even more. But um, so I hope that answers your question. And um, thank you all for listening. If you'd like more information or to learn how you can get help, additional resources on OCD, please visit www.iocdf.org. They have a great resource directory of all of the therapists, clinicians, and support groups specializing in OCD and related disorders in your area. So check that out if you are like me. And thank you guys so much for listening, watching. Comment below. What do you want to hear me talk about next? Still figuring out what we're doing next week for the show. So if you have ideas, send them in. Bye. I'm searching for this all my life.